Welcome back to What's Brewing, and we are at the great Yards Brewing Tap Room in Northern Liberties. Yeah, and you know, as luck would have it, Tom Keogh is in the house. Who would think? Let's bring We're him sorry. over. Hey, the Tom, Tom, come on like over here. He's a turtle, but he brews like a mask. <laughs> How and, you guys and, doing? Great. Listen, we just, your place is terrific. Awesome. We're having a great time. You opened this, uh, what, last year? Last year, a week before Thanksgiving. It's, and it's doing all right, as I can see from a midday crowd. Here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So Tom, uh, Tom, you're the president and founder of Yards Brewing. Yes. Uh, we've known each other for a long time. Uh, you started in Maniunk. Uh, <laughs> what do you remember about that first brewery that you were in? Um, the size. It was really small, but it was really, the great thing was you just got a lot of character out of it. And you know, we were able to make our beers and sell them and it was uh, you know, the beginning of a dream. A, a dream that to become as big as you are today? I didn't think we would ever become this big. Back then, breweries weren't as big, and craft brewers, you were got to a certain area or a certain level, and that's that's as big as I thought you could get. So, how big are you right now? Or I, I know, and it's all relative. I mean, you're yeah. not Budweiser, Miller <laughs> Coors here. You are still a small brewery. We're still a small brewery. Thank God we, for we're that. Making, yeah, <laughs> we're making about forty-five thousand barrels a year. And uh, you know we're enjoying every minute of it. How many states are you in? How far is the you extend? We're, we're in four states. We're in all of Pennsylvania and part of, uh, all of New Jersey, all of Delaware, and a little bit of Maryland. I, I mean, there have been so many people since you did this kind of getting into it, working their way up. And yeah. one of the things that I really love, because I'm a little bit involved in the <laughs> business, is there is a real brotherhood, a real kinship among craft breweries that I don't find in any other business I've ever worked. Absolutely. I think we all want good beer to be out there. We're all concerned about that. We all share ideas. We all will share ingredients. If somebody needs a bag of hops, we can help them out. Mm -hmm. Speaking of so, which, what are you drinking right now? So I'm drinking our Philly Pale Ale. Good choice. Is that, yeah. is that your go-to beer? You it know? is. It is my go-to beer. For for mostly, it's like it's always good at any occasion to me. So. <laughs> your top seller? It's our top seller, without right. a doubt. Now, I got a bone to pick with you, Keo. Sure. All right, here it is. We did a feature at the start of the show on pumpkin beers. Yes. We featured some great pumpkin beers from all around Pennsylvania. We love them, right? Yes. And we figured we're at Yards, we'll try their pumpkin beer. You don't got one. There's no. not one here. No. And in fact, you take a hardcore anti-pumpkin stance. Yes. What's up with that? We don't like to be trendy. <laughs> we, we're kind of like this brewery that's been around for 24 years, mm -hmm. and we want to brew beer that's going to be around for 24 years. We want, we want good beers that's always going to be there. To me, pumpkin beer was always a trend, although it was really, really popular a few years ago. I think the numbers of pumpkin beer are starting so, to go down a little so, bit. So you don't want to be trendy, that's and you right. don't want to just do like oddball stuff, but you have made a beer that literally has Christmas trees in it. Yes. Okay, well, that's consistent. We like being traditional. <laughs> and doing traditional recipes. So that's a big part of it. I see. And so Christmas trees is. is. And what that, that beer is. Uh, it's one our of, Poor Richard's Tavern Spruce. Exactly. So a beer that was, was flavored with spruce like they used to do. Like they used to do instead of hops. It also had a vitamin C uh, value in it that was good for uh, people who were on ships that needed uh, vitamin C in colder climates where you can't really grow citrus. All right. So. I love he's working the whole, <laughs> the whole health angle. Exactly. That's why I drink it, sure. <laughs> you also brewed a beer at one time with oysters in it. We did. And that, again, a traditional style. Because what oysters were was a big part of making stouts. And the fact that the oysters had calcium in there, which changed the pH of the brew, would actually, you know, be, you know, make the harder tannins of the darker, darker malts seem smoother. So that was uh, Yards Love Stout. Then. Yards Love Stout, yes, okay. which we're still doing. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so now that you're in this nice big facility, uh, do you see your your brewing changing at all here? I mean, how has the company evolved from a brewmaster's point of view, from those days when you're in the small place doing it all yourself uh, to this point where you've got how many employees? We're up to 135 employees. Right. So how's, wow, how's things you. changed for you here? It's been amazing as far as going into the brewing part of how things have changed. I think, you know, it's a, the ability to become more consistent. You know, it's like you have to, you're brewing and you're the only guy there and you have to answer the phone. You don't have to do that anymore. You actually, if you got to go do something, the, the automation is going to help you make sure you don't get out of step. And your tops are still the IPAs? Are, correct, your top Philly, sellers? Philly is our biggest one, seconds right. IPA. And believe it or not, our third biggest seller, which is the bulk of what we do, these three beers, is Brawler. 
which is oh, an English mile. It's a great beer. Wow. Is the IPA boom going to last forever? And by the way, please say yes. <laughs> it's what I like, and it's it's I, I'm a big fan. I, I, I think, you know, IPAs are definitely going to last forever. But I think it's going to change how people go, go after their IPAs. I think people are, aren't going to always be like, give me something that's going to ruin the rest of my day. They want, okay. a, they want an IPA session. that's going to be a little more sessionable, mm -hmm. but maybe something that they can say, hey, I can have this and still have another beer. Well, in a, in a large brewery like this, how easy is it for you to add a new beer to the mix? Uh, it's easy as far as recipe formulation and things like that. The hard part now is because of our size, we don't want to be putting things out there to just sort of distract from our regular beers. Right, but in so. terms of brewing itself, you can do that, a small we, we batch or something? Yeah, so within our 100 barrel brew house, we also have built in a 20 barrel water ton. Okay. So we can do smaller pilot brews that'll be allow us, allow us to you know, do some experimental fun beers, which we're doing. It's amazing to me how much you've grown uh, in these years because you really truly, I mean, you might've been able to fit your entire brewery out in this little area. And, uh, and to see it grow like that is, is remarkable in my opinion uh, for any business, but for beer, I love it. Yeah, thank you. Hey, I got one more thing to, uh, not, one more thing to bring up with you. Sure. Uh, because uh, you and I, and, and unfortunately no longer, but we used to be in some fantasy football leagues yes. together. And I, I just want to say this. Tom Keogh <laughs> is perhaps the finest beer man in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He knows how to make it, how to market it. He built a beautiful place. He's the single worst fantasy football <laughs> player I have ever known. And when I was in leagues with him, I think about three years, you couldn't wait till your season matchup with Tom. You're big on draft night, <laughs> and then you would never change your team. You would have guys, that, and like he got injured in the second week out for the year. Week 14, he's still playing. Yeah. I love I, you for that. I like to take chances on people, and I, I like to commit to them. Even if they're hurt, I'm hoping they're going to get back into the game. Oh. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's very good. Guy's knee has been ripped off. Tom's sticking with him. So we're here on a uh, in the afternoon here. You're starting to pick up a crowd. Uh, a little bit more about your, your tap room here. You do tours here? We do tours. Uh, it's a great part of how we're able to show off the brewery to you know people, tourists, and even just the locals who like to show off to their friends and things like that. So That's a, an important part of making beer these days is getting people on the scene to see how their beer is made. Yeah, it really is because, I mean, not only have we been around for a while, we get to show some of the history with the original Yards equipment. We also get to, you know, show them how we're doing it today, things like that. It's a, it's a lot of fun and it's a real big part of, you know, what we're trying to accomplish here with having such a big space, you know, right, right near downtown. Can you tell us anything about the, the near future at Yards, what we can look forward to? <laughs> any well, surprises? <laughs> um, I don't think there's any real surprises on what we're going to do. We're very, I think we're going to be pretty predictable uh, on our beers. Um, you know, but we really love, you know, finding, you know, and innovating with some of the uh, smaller batches we're going to be able to do. Uh, that was my plug for this beer, which is yeah. Belgian Gold. Yeah. I was hoping that he would tell me that it was going to go into full <laughs> production. Really nice beer, a little bit lighter body than your typical Belgian beer, a little bit lighter alcohol, uh, but very refreshing. I'm enjoying this beer quite a bit. Terrific, because it's a beer that we definitely are going to be looking at to you know, get that right where it needs to be, because it's something that we definitely want to keep around. All right, so we got one more thing, which is kind of good news for you, and this is entirely coincidental, but we are as part of this show, over the next 14, 15 episodes, we're going to do a brew down of 16 Pennsylvania IPAs. You put together the brackets, Joe Sixpack. I did, and uh, we, you know, just coincidentally, uh, the first matchup was uh, Yards, uh, Cape of Good Hope, uh, double IPA, fantastic beer. We matched it up against, right up the road, uh, one of your, your fun rivals uh, from Evil Genius Han shot first. Yeah. Great name for a beer, by the way, <laughs> yeah. if you're a Star Wars fan. And uh, I don't have the latest results in front of me, but I do know that you, uh, it was around 80% to 20% that Yards, Cape of Good Hope wins and moves into the next uh, bracket. Cape of Good Hope has a real cult following. It's a beer that we come out with every year as a limited seasonal. And the really neat thing about it is we, we tend to keep the body of the beer and everything the same each year, but we'll change a little bit of the dry hop. Oh, okay. Kind of get okay. people to say, like, they, so they can't wait for the next year's version. That's great. So. Tom Q, you've got loyalists, and for good reason, you make good beer. Thanks so much for having us here, buddy. It's a pleasure. He's Tom Keogh of Yards Brewing. That's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack now, and thanks for watching What's Brewing.